deadlifts. Pre-workout training weight, 239.6. That's a pretty good weight. Wow, all right. Less, well we're going on I think like four weeks, I think it is. Four weeks and uh, we'll do the meet. And coming in already in the 240s, midday is good. I think this morning I was like 237 something. So, I'll take it. 240 training weight. Yeah, it was, it was 240. 239, 240 basically. I'm gonna get ready for the gym. We have a big single on deads and I was a little worried last week because the single I felt like wasn't where I wanted it to be, but it's okay. Nabil, are you on the phone? All right, I'm gonna head out. It is a good day to have a day. Tip of the tongue, deep the lips. Tip of the tongue, deep the lips. I just took like four pills of Gorilla. Um, what is it? Gorilla and not Gorilla Energy. Gorilla Shroom. Now I'm gonna take four pills of Gorilla Smooth. This is giving me the focus I need. For today's workout, I wanna be a little extra focused because big pull today and, well, we're at a good body weight. I do notice when I get usually to this body weight, I'm breathing more heavy probably because my blood pressure's going a little higher. But if you ain't getting high blood pressure in your training, I mean, are you really training? Honestly, dude, I might just take two Gorilla Energy drinks. It, it's the same thing as the pre-workouts. Because, I don't know, one, I want to have a kind of like a diversity of flavor in me today. Two, I don't want to fill up this with pre-workout when I can put my frozen juice in it. And also three, I think I can get some mega compression in my stomach. If I, with the, with the uh, what's the opposite of still water? I can't remember what they call it. They, they serve it to you in the UK though, that's all they served, I hated it. I like still water, but like for energy drinks, obviously not. I think we're taking a white one. We'll take a red one. These are my two. That gives us 400 caffeine, which we have on our Wednesdays. When it gets to this level. Hello. I hope this is a good angle. Can't really tell, just cause I had, I had it on a good angle last time. I had to take it down because Nabil was driving. He didn't, or he was riding with me. He got a little scared if we got in an accident, the holder would kill him. But uh, it's time to go to the gym. So like I said, I, I weighed in at around like 239.6 or like 240, but it wasn't morning weight. Um, it was, you know, my pre-workout weight, which I'm, I'm cool with, because it just gives me more motivation to eat. And I think with having it where eating food um, can be difficult, if you can get more motivation, like the more motivation you can get to eat, the better, because that will just continuously make you want to progress in eating more, you know? So, 
just like how you will maybe watch motivational working out, right? I'll check out bulking motivations if I can get food that motivates me to eat more, if I have music that, I'll, that gets me in the rhythm to eat more, whatever I can do to just get the food down, I will do because I need to. I was, I was thinking back, I like, and I, I've been thinking about it a little bit more, you know, like, okay, hey, when do I, when does Sawyer Clot shred down, right? When do I get lean? And I really don't know. Because I feel like I haven't really been able to maximize my um, strength progress to the fullest degree till about right now, you know? And it might be where after the pro, I might think, oh, hey, I'm just going to continue doing this two-month thing. And... Um, just keep eating and just trying to get stronger. We're on a good track right now on bench press that I might just keep doing that. Because who knows? And if it gets to a point though, if, I, 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 if I'm 270 or something, I'm down for that. I don't know what is all in the cards for me right now because frankly, I'm just focused on this meat, right? But I do like to plan ahead. And I was eyeing up the the IPF, right? Because the IPF, I'm gonna be honest, is kind of in like, it doesn't look like it's too competitive right now. And it's just one more box I can kind of check off. I just saw that Nathaniel Mazaya got like third at junior IPFs. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like, even though there's weight class dif differentiates, like different weight classes, um, if I, if I go to 120 as a junior, 120 kilo, that's like 260, 270. And I squat around a 740, you know, bench my 420, but then pull an eight or something. Uh, that's pretty damn high and expected to what, what the competition is. I don't know, you know, but I didn't want to do IPF this year for one of two reasons, right? The IPF is one of those things where if like you go to IPF Worlds, you're going against people, right? And you win and, oh, you're a world champion because you competed against people around the world. But the only issue I see with that is like, okay, you maybe won this world event, right? But maybe you didn't take a record, right? And I like to think if, if there could be a time where you take anybody their, at their best, right? If you could have it where, oh, LeBron James goes against uh, Kobe Bryant who goes against Michael Jordan, right? Then you'd actually see who's the actual best of the best. But then if you go, oh, well, I don't know basketball is this good, but just say like, oh, well, LeBron James is the best because he hit 75 points. And then like, oh, well, Kobe Bryant did 75 points too. And it's like, okay, yeah, but like these are just at, at 20, let's say it was 20 years apart. Well, these are just... So what I was saying is... I don't believe a record that hasn't, I don't think there's a record that stands where it hasn't been broken. I don't think there's a record that's like 35 years old that hasn't been broken, you know? So with that being in powerlifting, I would rather have it where I can this year, right? Take a world record that hasn't been broken, right? I take a world record, I am a world record holder. And then by, you know, next year or whatever, I can just take a world title, right? Cause then you have it where it's like, okay, hey, I'm a, uh, Hi, my name's Sawyer Clot. You know, oh, I won junior nationals. You know, so I was a junior national champion. I'm a world record holder in the so and so. And then, then the next year, you know, you win a, a championship or you get second or third. But I'm thinking winning, right? Oh, and also I'm a world champion. Boom, right there. You have a nice, like, good, good uh, stats. Because at the end of the day, right? I, I think of this is how I think. Like you want to add some, you want to add good things to your portfolio, just like a job. So if you can get your hands in things that are different or unique or just experimental, that's great. You know, I, I do want to have it where eventually I want to get into like some short films and eventually kind of like get into like movies and acting and all that stuff. And that's just another thing just added to the portfolio and make sure the things you're doing though is like you enjoy, you know, but that's just one thing I do want to do. 
So we'll see, you know. But I mean, IPF is such a, a while, you know. And also with that acting thing, I never want to take away my my. I don't want to say drive, but it's like if I find something, I find fun. Hello. So as I was saying, um, I don't know what I was saying. I had to turn off the camera because it got too hot for you guys. I was thinking though, um, I've been training for like seven years now. I started training when I was 15. I'm 22 now. Yeah, seven years. And I did want to release like a six year transformation at one point, because it would be three, six, and then like nine or 10. But when COVID happened, I basically lost half a year to a year of gym progression, it seemed like. So I didn't actually make that six year. But maybe I'll do like an eight year and then a 10 year or like a 12 year or something. I don't know yet. It depends on what our strengths at, you know, cause I have numbers I want to hit, you know, like a 765 squat, like a 450 ish bench, and then like a 945 deadlift, a thousand, whatever, something like around that. I think would be cool. And I think it would be it's just one of those things where I, I think I'm going to have one of the most documented pieces when it comes to like training for um, the ages of like 15 plus, like when you start training, you know? And I haven't uploaded any more transformations, but I think I might work on my bench one because I have a lot of footage that hasn't been shown and it's just the bench progression of 135 to 405 because that was the hardest jump for me, especially being a longer armed fellow. But it is possible, you know? I made, I made sure of that because I would have, like every person, right, who had the crappiest bench, we got the 405. And I know like 405 is one of those numbers now on bench where people, like people honestly discredit it and be like, oh, some 16 year old's bench a 405. But like, I feel like most people that say that don't bench 405. You know, if some 16 year old benched 405, they don't go, oh, that's, oh, I did it because at 16, you know, if they do, they're a fucking asshole. And if they do, I'll just go, oh, well, I just deadlifted your fucking total when I was 15, you know, <laughs> but I'm, I'm just thinking of like some other videos. I want to keep these rolling, these kind of like raw training stuff, training footage. It, it, it's easier for me to edit. It's less for me having to like think about. And sometimes if I can underthink the things, it's better, it's like almost like in a lot of repetitive things, you know, and in a, in a repetitive world, it's sometimes good just to underthink, you know, where then, because as soon as you if you start thinking, then you overthink it, and then it gets to a point where then you don't do th certain things. You know, if I if I actually thought out a lot of the things I did when I started training, it would probably make it where I wouldn't be where I'm at. Because you had to be a little idiotic, crazy, stupid, whatever you want to call it, to do certain things. You know, I remember at one point I was squatting every single day because I had this fear of leg day. If somebody told you, "Oh, hey, I'm squatting every single day." You know, some TikTok kid would say that's stupid to like make you feel bad about yourself or whatever, right? I'm glad I didn't grow up in that era because I did some stupid things, but I learned through those stupid things. And that's the thing with fitness is like, sometimes you have to learn doing things the stupid way in order to actually learn it, how to do it correctly. It's good to learn stuff correctly, but it's like one of those things where, and this is to a degree, right? But if you have it where, oh, well, you know, you, you're doing something and then you're not making really any progress, but then like you learn something else and then it kind of just keeps 
keeps the flow of like learning, you know, because at the end of the day, this, this fitness niche, this fitness game, this fitness world, whatever you want to call it, it could get boring really easily where you don't want to do anything. You don't want to, because come on, we, we both know like fitness industry kind of sucks. Just got to the gym. <sighs> Dude, you guys see that, uh, Mario Judah is coming out with a new song. I don't really listen to him, but his one song kind of sounded good. I might listen to it in the gym. It's not out, but there's like a piece of it on TikTok. Oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Long ride. No fucking way. Dude, no way. I just noticed this. I broke the freaking buckle off my SB. No way. I don't think that affects the... I don't think that affects it. No way. I'm spending from on Saturday. I almost guarantee it. About time. That's probably why I've been able to like belt flip. Because it's been broken. I just tested the two platforms I usually train on. I think I'm gonna go train on the one that's in front of me. Nabil usually pulls on it. It feels like it's a little flatter. We'll see. I'm feeling good. Even though I'm yawning. I just gotta get in the rhythm. And then feel everything up. But right now I feel pretty good, especially being 240. <sighs> So these 315s, I don't know if they've dropped yet, but they'll drop by the day this video is posted. And then this is the, what is it even called? I want to always say college, college name or whatever it is, but it's not. It's the, it's not power. It's something. What is it? What is this, what is this one called? What is the name of it? Oh, I'll think of it. I just posted it. Ooh, my hamstrings. I have to do some weird warm ups. So, what I'm doing right now, I'm squeezing the knees together. I usually do this with a foam roller, but this is close by. It's just a tube. I just want to feel my adductors and I do it usually. I almost can feel a crack. I don't know where the crack's coming from, but it feels good. I used to do this all in high school. Like every day. People would ask me like on this like a few years ago. They'd be like, what's your warm-up routine? What's your warm-up routine? And I wouldn't I won't show them because it was all like fun and stuff. And then when I got injured, my coach sent me some protocols. And I was like, this is very similar to the stuff I was doing in high school that I didn't have a name for. I just kind of like BS'd it and made it up. And they were actually like good warm up protocols. So it's kind of funny how I was using that stuff. I was doing my own, my own stuff almost. And they were good. So when I do this, right, I just like squeeze my ass. Now sometimes I feel a pop right underneath you, you know? Feels good.
I'm usually bracing my core when I'm doing this too. Just feeling everything. Like three warm up sets and then I'll actually start getting into it. Even though I'd like, I'd like to be right here. Platform's dipped and I'm not going to be dipping. I'm not going to be deadlifting on a dip platform. Especially with this heavy single. I want to feel good as much as I can. It's Taking an adequate amount of time of resting. I think sometimes when I get up to this heavy body weight, I think I have to go, go, go because I'm breathing a lot more heavy, but I don't need to do that. It's almost like just go when I want to go. Then you know I'm ready. I'll be ready. There we go. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. Uh. Fuck you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Everything's led to this moment. Kill you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm the black. Redemption time. Last block we fucking made this bitch so I'm gonna make you fast. I'm gonna make it fast. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna fucking kill you. This is gonna dictate us where we stand in prep. Who we match up against. Time to put this fucking body weight to good use. Let's rip this shit. Come on, motherfucker. <laughs> Alright, you gotta do this. You have to do this. You have to fucking do this. You have to do this. Come on, son. You have to do this. You have to do this. You have to fucking do this. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. You have to fucking go.
Oh my So we pulled the 804 exactly how we needed to. I gotta figure out what to do with these platforms because my feet are kind of wobbling. So one, I either might switch to my other Avancuses because these ones might have just been stretched out over time. You know, shoes sometimes do that. Because I've used these for outside of the gym so much. But I think we're gonna do, I think we're gonna do 705 for some reps. I haven't done that at all, at all, all block. We'll see how we feel. We're at 240, technically, at the training weight, so I'm just gonna kinda keep, keep pulling. I think it's like six or seven reps. I usually don't rep a lot of heavy weights just because uh, it seems like I don't need to. You know, I can just like focus on the singles and stuff, and on top of it, having it where I squat low bar, and my back's always getting, you know, fried. I don't feel like it's, there's a need to overly, overly fry your back, you know, because you still need to recover. Just some things I feel like I realized over the years of training, especially with how I train. But, uh, yeah, it moved good. I'm happy. Now I just gotta things situated yeah. keep the progress going keep the food and sleep going we should have an eventful eventful training session and an eventful meet I definitely think so definitely in the cards I'm going to put this in the middle I'm going to see what happens because I haven't yet wrecked it better. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe it's not that. Maybe it's a piece of shit. Could be a piece of fucking shit. I could hate it. Let's just try it. Come on. Seven. Seven. Second set with 617. Well, I honestly might next week. Tie my shoes. Probably would be smart. It felt good. It felt like uh, when I'm planted, right? And I shift into my. I open up my hips. There isn't like that too much. Especially being where I can root in. My heels aren't wiggling around. And I wedge. There's not gonna be too much of this on balancing. So, we got some bench to do. We'll see what happens. We have a single actually. We had a single on Monday, and we benched 396 or something. And that was, I think that's a training PR, like, before we're fully peaked. And we did that medium grip. Today is gonna be max grip with. So we'll see how that feels. I uh, cracked open my juice and my sip on that. Just get some sugars in me. I actually haven't even finished my energy drink. The first one I did, but not my second one. I'm gonna take that bench over there. And uh, I'll just see, see how it goes, you know. My shoulder is feeling a little, not bad. But it seems like when I push the medium grip and the max grip, it can get a little iffy. So we'll see how it goes, you know. Just gotta keep my scabs retracted. And then just press off. But it would be good is 
I match that 397 or we do a 407. The biggest thing is I don't want to get too greedy. So I don't want to overshoot that shit. And then by meat time, I have to take something like, you know, 387, uh, 387 when I could maybe like build up to a 407, 418, you know? So we're just gonna fill it out though. Max Grips are feeling really nice. So we're gonna be moving on to bench. I'm not gonna be able to tell if you guys can hear me because there's a fan behind me. But single time. Let's see how we feel. I was thinking, why well my why do I feel like my shoes were tighter when I pulled my 840? You know what I probably think it is? I was in the air, I was flying, and I was probably holding onto a lot of water because I was up in the air and then I went off the water, went, in, went off the air. And since you like lose a bunch of weight, then I was just was drinking a bunch of water. You know, my fingers and feet were probably more swelled up than they usually are. I almost guarantee that. I think we're on a good track with how it's feeling. I gotta go on my calculator and see what kind of jumps I wanna make. So 330. So to do 330. 360. Then 390. That's what I got in my plan. In my brain. We'll see, I'm gonna see how this one moves on camera. And uh, we'll notice what we can do, you know? So good. Good job to still do, especially in training, so. I had to crank it up one more on the rack because for some reason I had it a little lower. And it, it's cool because it's like, okay, it doesn't wear out my triceps as much, but that's also not when it's by the pump. You know, it's crucial. It's not really like locked up. You can be a little loose, but not to the degree I had it at. That I move real nice. I can't tell if I have another, if I have a white in there. I don't like having a white filter. So. But I'm gonna probably ask for a person to spot me. I'm gonna get a little more hyped up. I might take up some and soul on top of it. Please. I really want this. If I make it a good pause, I'll be happy about it, you know? So if I go, went from 330 to 374, that was a big jump. Three, four, five, four, that's a 40 pound jump, and I just smashed that. And then the 20 point jump. Basically, I think I got it. Not I, 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 I got it. I got it. I'm gonna put some chalk on my hands and my fucking um, That's it, that's the decision. We're throwing the white on. There it is. Okay. Bought me. No lift off, just. All right, thank you. Mm. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Fuck you. Ugh. All right, that was money. I think this is gonna be the ultimate decision where we're gonna go max grip for our pump. Because I've been playing around, you know, max, medium, max, medium, max, pause was better than last month, than Monday. Medium grip, like I get that bounce, but it's like, it, it's very iffy, you know? So I'm gonna drop it down to 352 and do some reps with that. And then we'll drop it down again. And then we'll finish out our workout. But I'm so happy with that. That moved exactly how we needed it to. Like just the, the amount of confidence I needed, just boom, 397. Oh, dude. Imagine a fucking 390 on the bar, 390 kilo, 418 is just dirty. Three reds in a green. And having to do three reds for like the longest time looks so looks so bad because it looks like it's 315, but it ain't. Out of storage on my phone. I need to get one of those like iCloud sponsors. So like give me free data to put up in the cloud to eventually have it where some hacker's gonna fucking take it and get all my photos of me flexing when I was 17 and then sell it on the black market for hundreds of dollars. I need a data sponsor. We finish up on our benches, our deadlifts. Now we have some accessories before we can get out of here. So let's get that done. I've been here a little longer than I want to, but that's how it goes when we film. And when we got big weights hitting, I'm so happy with that uh, 397. Well, I've never done that twice since random, especially one medium and then one max grip. So I think we're on a really good track. 11 pounds more than that. His full 18, which is huge PR. So I'm just thinking, I asked Sean, my coach, who we're gonna do because I've been having it, where I've been having two heavy sessions, single bench sessions. When I actually supposed to, was supposed to be doing one, but I've been playing around with medium and max grip. My medium's on my Mondays, max grip on Wednesdays. So I was just wondering like, okay, hey, how are we gonna try to recover to the fullest when our comp comes around, like the week of the comp, do we just have it where on Mondays, we just have it lighter, and then on Wednesdays we have it heavier? Or do we switch it to where Mondays are the heavier ones? Forget the medium grip, turn it to a max grip, so max, max, you know, on both days. But then just having that Wednesday actually be a lighter day, which where it should have been, but I'm not doing it like that, you know, because I've been just playing around. I'm not sure he'll get back to me, but I'm I have high hopes for my bench press, and even even if it's one of those things where like we go on bench, we'll have a good sec number secured, and then if we leave if we leave weight on the platform, hey, we'll have a fun a fun little off-program bench session. We'll see. We'll see. So, kind of changed my approach to my weighted dips because, <laughs> to be fair, my weighted dip form was good when it's like, I call it dip station. But, uh, one lower. The one with this one with the handles that are thick. My technique is horrendous. And what ends up happening. And I can't believe I, I've went this long without doing it, without realizing it. I'm an idiot in that instance where I was doing it and I'm like kipping it up. If some person who actually knew how to do dips looked at me, they'd be like, what the hell? You know? And they'd look at me and they'd be like, yeah, no wonder your fucking bench sucks. You're not even doing it like a how to like actually do it. So I approach to my bench right now, and my 
my, dip, my, my approach to this dip station for my bench, my technique. Number one, I actually want to start in here. I don't want to go up top. Not right now. Not with how, uh, how I'm built and where my issues are. I want to get strong being in the pocket in the hole right here. Similar to like how in the last video I talked over my leg press and how I love being in the hole. I think that's something I can carry over instead of the legs I'll put into the triceps. Number two, I'm not doing any extension. And at this point, I just really want to go slow. Fuck the weight. I literally just want to feel this tension similar as if it was a tempo bench. You know, because I was, I was doing things wrong. And, you know, I'll admit it, you know, I'm not perfect. And I just found I was being mental almost about it, being like, oh, I got to hit this certain weight each training session when in all reality, it doesn't matter. It depends on like, this literally has nothing to do with my bench press. This is a tool to get my bench press stronger, but nobody's really caring about how much I weighted dip, you know? And if they see me with three or four plates weighted dipping, but I look like an absolute imbecile, well, I look like the fool. And then I go, oh no, I don't know, I don't know how to do it because I've been four or five. I look even more like an imbecile. So I might as well keep the, the weight at a relatively fine amount and do it properly. With, you know, having the two sessions different, like the one medium grip session and then the one max grip session, I think this is actually right now the perfect recipe for me. You know, one medium, one max for the singles, I have medium doubles, I have this, but I'm doing it more of as a tempo. I think this is gonna be the bread and butter for this prep. And we'll see how long I have to, how long I have to wait until I have to switch it up, we'll see. But we got five right now, and then we'll do some more. But I'm really just gonna focus on this contraction, this slowness. Not, not really slowness, just like this control. You know, and then my well, last set, I'm gonna actually do it the opposite way. I'm gonna face the other direction, just cause I don't. And I'm like, why, why don't I? Cause it's harder, cause it's different. I might as well try it, you know? So we got five right now. Push down, one over, one kind of curved. I've been, I've been kind of liking this curved one. I haven't seen people do it. Maybe it's BS, but I'm gonna have it like this. So when I'm doing this, right? I'm uh, trying to take my lat of the equation. Might bring it down one more. But um, I'm trying to take the lat of the equation. I would be more elbow focused because that's a... I had one more ounce, I can't remember what I had, maybe. But basically, I'm trying to make it where it's more, more elbow almost, less lat, because I feel like when I'm doing this, you know, shoulder tends to roll forward, lat can be put in, but here, I'm just going like this. And I want it where it's that elbow, you know. I think you get similar from like one of those, but 
I want to be way bigger, and uh, I can feel it on my elbow, you know. I've been just like shifting my feet, racing. be just a BS movement, but I feel it in my elbows and that's what I want to feel. The next one I've been doing, you guys have been seeing me do it for a while. I just have these huge lats, you know, and they can sometimes take work on the I'm doing two sets of trying to take the lat out of the equation. Yeah. The reason why I do it like this, right? If we take a look at like the version one Nautilus tricep machines. Nautilus, I like to look at a lot of machines by Nautilus because they created some amazing machines and you don't see them anymore. And the people are always trying to get their hands on them. But uh, one of the tricep machines, it was all the way up here. You know, if you ever try doing a tricep or a bicep extension, think about, like just feel your lat. Just like when you bring it down. But guess what? You know what is contracted? Your fucking biceps and triceps when you're doing it. So if you look at the old Nautilus versions, they had a bicep machine where and then they had the same thing with the tricep. I don't have that, but doing it like this gives me a similar feeling. It definitely gives you a different pump, you know. With, with this one, I'm not really training my long head, I'm training my medial head. And if you look at like Kevin Maroney, dude, his medial head was fucking crazy. And he did this, dude, and walked forward. It gives you that 3D shape, look. Especially when you're like at a front, it like sticks out. I'm pretty sure it was the medial head, maybe I'm wrong. But, I'm gonna do one more set of this and then do some uh, front, front laterals. Everything right now, I'm just trying to feel it in my elbows. It's like this is probably improving my mobility also. Going as hard on these bad boys today just because we are training. We're getting closer to the meat. I don't want my triceps too exhausted, especially with fooling around. With these grips I'm doing. But I am getting a good pump. I think it's time to see 
what you look like, especially being 240 pounds. Not bad. Not bad at all. I just want to hold it just for stability reasons, you know? I tried to at least. It can be difficult when you're a lengthy bastard. But, uh, yeah. That's enough uh, pump stuff today. We got a pump day on tomorrow, actually. So I don't wanna. Oh, yeah. Look at that upper chest. Oh. Wow. I don't even know if I'm getting this. So I don't know if I am. That's it for today. Damn it. She's good. Yeah. She's good. Hello. Oh. What a workout. I, uh, Definitely trained longer than anticipated. I'm not trying to make this a daily thing on my videos, but uh, I think it, it's going to become a daily thing for my videos, even though my videos aren't gonna be a daily thing. Saturday was just a long day because it was a full day of eating and filming and talking and doing all that. You know, I, I probably won't do full day of eatings as much as you guys want me to, but just because um, I mean, they take a long time. Actually, no, they take out a long time. That's a more accurate way to say it. So, yeah. This isn't gonna be too bad because it was just talking to you guys when we're deadlifting. And this session probably was gonna take, you know, a little longer anyways. But um, I think I'm gonna run to Taco Bell because it did take a little longer than normal. And the way I'm seeing it, it's not like I'm putting music in these videos so I can monetize them, right? And uh, hopefully 
with how long these are even if I get a couple thousand views off of it maybe it will be enough to maybe it will be like an, like twelve dollars I make hopefully if I can make like twelve dollars off this video um, I'll be happy because that's that will cancel out my Taco Bell that I order every time I do a video you know so if you guys notice I have ads on this video it's just so I can cancel it out where I, I can make it where it's like hey it's okay you know I'm uh you know they cancel each other out make a good video you know stay a little longer in the gym but uh get Taco Bell after and uh treat yourself so we'll get 14 1400 calories from that so we'll see the juice isn't it, the juice is finished pretty much I had a good workout though really good workout I gotta wash my hands before I eat that Taco Bell I think a big mistake I could have happen where I try to eat it after sweating and touching all that gym equipment I'll get sick I can already see it and I do not need to get sick um, before my meat that's uh, something that happened last time and I just can't have that happen same kind of reason why I'm not like editing this video in one day because I can't afford staying up I just gotta like you know have the come down I'm already wow I'm actually kind of happy about this I'm kind of already feeling my eyes are tired and usually if I if I probably finish that energy drink I uh, probably would have stayed up all night hi could I get a soft taco supreme um, uh, Doritos cheesy gordita crunch with nacho cheese okay. and then could I also get a grilled cheese burrito with beef okay. and that will be it no I'll be all right thank you so much I'm gonna be honest last time I had this Taco Bell it wasn't with you guys when I had it with you guys it was good but then I had it again the dude put like 900 scoops of ranch or sour cream. I don't know what it was. It was some white stuff in it. And uh, he just took away from the, the food. Dude, I was gone at, from the gym for a while. The Bill's probably like, dude, where the hell have you been? It's all right. I'm making a good video. And we, we pulled 804 good. It's just our feet positioning was uh, crap, you know, like the stability on it. But we'll fix that. Tying the shoes now. I think we've solved that with being in the air. Because every time I've deadlifted, when I've traveled, I thought my stability is just on par. It's just great, right? But the mobility is usually the crap because I'm sitting in a, a flight, you know, four hours or whatever than a car. So total of probably like six hours when I'm flying. So like the positioning is like eh, but the stability is uh-huh. But then here, positioning, ah. Uh. So tightening up the shoes might be one of those like key components of like, oh shit. It's getting serious, you know? So, I'm thinking of numbers I have to hit. I gotta stay in this 240 range, maybe be, get up to 245 or something. I'm feeling good, I just gotta keep, keep eating though. I gotta make sure during this time, I don't get comfortable and be like, oh, I'm feeling good, let me make more videos. Cause I don't need to overwork myself, you know? I'll upload the videos when I am when I need to, you know, when I'm like, okay, this is like gonna be a good time to video, it's not gonna affect it, I'm good on my food, right? But I'm not pressuring up myself to try to get a video this exact day or this or this, you know? I just want you guys to know that because at the same time, a priority right now is the health and the training for this meet because the meat video is going to be good but it's also a performance you know it's not about just the video it's about the performance of what i can put on since competing last and every meet we've done we've won you know we're three and out and uh i think it would be kind of nice going into this american pro new federation new kid on the block type thing and come out with the w and make it four and oh we'll see I'm not, I'm not one of those things though where it's going to affect me mentally, you know, be like, oh, I lost. I mean, uh, I'm not going to turn that in my entire personality. Some people do, but, uh, 
She's so totally cool. Makes it fun. Because at the end of the day, if it's not fun, why are you doing it? Sometimes I, I can work myself up to a point where I feel like powerlifting is not fun. I feel like a lot of people can have that happen. And sometimes it's just because I'm in a rut. Sometimes it's because my training's going to shit. But at the end of the day, as long as it turns into a little more fun and then I'm enjoying it and I'm good at it, I'm going to keep pursuing it. You know? Alright. Your boy is hungry. Thank you. Dude, I don't know why I'm getting these gorilla mode gorilla mine texts. Oh. Wait a minute, because I ordered something. I think got my information. Even though I'm like an athlete and everything, I shouldn't be like it's just weird that I'm getting like texts like, hey, we're having a sale. Dude, I know. I'm in the group chat. I know. I'm in the group chat. I think. Still am. I hope. I joked in David's video where I'm like, I'm a euphoria athlete. I hope they just didn't drop me and just didn't say anything. I hope Gorilla just, so I was just joking about it. We'll see. Thank you. I, uh, I'm not going to eat these now because, like I said, I don't want to get sick. But when I get home, I won't show you guys it because I'm not trying to turn this into a full day of eating. I just want to get focused in, you know, and uh, get my food my food oh my gosh I can't there's this sharp ass turn and I can't always make it so I gotta... there we go but yeah I don't want to turn this into a full day of eating today because I just don't want to film I just want to be able to throw my headphones on and get it done I think especially with like influencers too they might focus too much on this filming stuff when it comes down to progress. You know, because a lot of influencers, they, they slow down with their progress when they become super, super... I'm gonna take this off. They get super, I don't know, consistent with YouTube and their progress, whether that's physique or strength, kind of goes down, it seems like. If they don't, they're probably on steroids. Um, I feel like, I, I mean, at the end of the day, though, there are, there are some factors that people are, you know, good at. Fucking A, dude, let me in. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. I want to... But when it comes down to progress, right? I think I've made some of, without a doubt, right? Some of the craziest progress that I've ever done. Strength, muscle size, right? Because if you guys have been watching me from, since I was in high school, I was a shredded 195, you know, lean 205. I don't even know what I'll look like if I got back down to let's say like a 205 um, weight because 
four years ago, I was 195 lean. You know, I'm talking, I have some photos where I, I, I was just looking at them and I'm like, damn, I'm so shredded in this with like a nice six pack. And I think that's what's a nice, about like a genetic attribute I have is like a good six pack that I can carry being 240 pounds. You know, a lot of people are like, Sawyer, how do you still have a six pack being 240 pounds? And it's like, I'm not even, they're or like relatively lean. As soon as I like drop maybe five pounds of water in the gym, I have that like sucked in look and then my abs pop out just a little bit more, especially from when they're pumped from bracing. It looks it looks great, especially with a photo. You throw the filters on and change some of the stuff, right? You look amazing. I don't look like it at all. You know, I'm a fat fat boy right now. But uh, just like, what will I look like? Dude, I'm gonna be honest. I don't know why my camera's overheating. It's nighttime. Shouldn't overheat. But uh, oh, what I was saying was, you know, I'm excited to see if I ever do shred down what I will look like. Because I've gained like an inch and a half probably, maybe two inches on my arms. My chest is actually huge. Before in photos it looked big, but it actually wasn't. Like it looked... It was like this, oh wow, that's huge. And then you turn and it's so thin. You know, that's how most of these influencers are, to be honest, is they look huge like this. It's the best way to describe it is the hand thing. You know, the hand analogy. They look huge, wide, big, and then they go like that and they're like tiny boys. And this entire last, you know, four years ever since high school has just been training to be maybe I look like this, right? Maybe I don't look like this, but I look like this, but then I'm like that, you know? Or maybe I am like this instead of this, but then, you know, big difference between this and this, you know, size-wise. Adding that chest, like, thickness and the back thickness and all that stuff. And especially when you're leaning down to, you look better on camera because you become more three-dimensional and then you also become more two-dimensional so what do I mean by that right three-dimensional meaning like you're getting you know you're getting the obliques and whatnot so then when you twist right you look bigger but then at the same time we got to think about a camera captures it only two-dimensionally because it's like this you know uh, the only time it would be you'd get a full idea of how a person is size wise is if they did a VR thing. Maybe I should be the first person to do a YouTube video on VR. And then you guys throw on these goggles from like Google and be like, wow, this dude's jacked, right? So having it where this is just like a little tip for you guys to understand like some of these people are just built good two dimensionally, but then you know, the hand analogy, boom, da -da! and that's not bad. I'm not hating. You know, I'm just bringing you guys into reality because some people can have this false expectation and I'm not trying to ruin these false expectations, you know, or some people have it where they don't know why they don't understand. That's why, you know, so if you feel like, hey, I look, why do I look? Maybe I'm bigger, right? Maybe I'm a big guy, but why do I look small on camera? You're just not two dimensionally built right now. And I say right now because you can. It's just about adding on that size and that shape and all that because all that's all it is is a shape. If a person, a person who's built two dimensionally has a good shape, regardless, you know, they might be small but they have a good shape. Some of them might not even have crazy insertions. A lot of them do though, but it's just they have a good shape and then that's two dimensionally put well. So all you have to do if you really if you really care about social media is just be more two dimensionally built. So I'm gonna tell you, boom, bigger chest, right? You don't have to worry about bath, back thickness. All you have to do is back width, right? So it's like, ooh, boom, lat pull downs, boom, chest flies. <laughs> um, maybe gets a little bit of a thicker biceps. You don't really need big triceps at all. Um, and then, you know, that's about it. You know, most people don't show their legs on social media. I mean, at the same time, I just wrote Alex Eubanks program off that. Some chest flies and some lap pull downs. Guys, they're going me $20 for that, that program. 
speaking of programs, I need to drop mine. I have a full deadlift program, just a deadlift. You can, you know, do your squats and whatever with it, but it's just a strictly deadlift program. I might drop it. I don't know. I got to think about it. I have to create the website. I don't have the website created. I've talked with a guy that was going to help me and I was going to get like a percentage off of it. He was going to get like 20 and I'd get 80, which is good and stuff. But then I talked to a few people and they're like, don't do that, Sawyer. And I don't know yet, you know, because it's like, what more, like, dude, all I have to do is like go on Wix and open up a Shopify account and then I get the money and then I don't lose 20%, but is 20% a lot of money? I guess it does add up. You know, it's so much one of those thinking things where it's like, damn, do I really need to think this much? And at the same time, right, as weird as it sounds, I'm gonna say this, right? And, you know, a lot of people are for you. Let me rephrase that. I have to say it again because the camera cut out. A lot of people aren't for you in this industry. They're for themselves, right? So it's very apparent where if you guys want to get in this industry and stuff, they're for you and they're in your corner and whatnot. And some of these people won't even be in fitness. You know, it's just good to have people that are for you in your corner. And I'm not talking a meat rider, right? Uh, I'm talking about a person who like straight up like asks you a question and like, oh, hey, do you think that's actually a good idea? You know, it makes you think. But those are good people to have in your corner. A lot of people, especially on social media, they get these friend groups and these friend groups are basically uh, like, oh, hey, let's like get a big, big, big mass following, lots of likes. And uh, we actually just don't care about one another. We'll make it look like we're best friends on social media. And uh, yeah, it's not even in fitness, dude. People on other social platforms do it all the time. Music artists, rappers, uh, movie artists, your parents maybe do that with people, you know? Uh, and I mean, I understand the business aspect of it and go you, you guys wanna have a million dollar business, you wanna make a lot of money, but same time, money I don't believe is everything. I believe that at the same time, I want to be able to go to bed with a healthy conscience and just some of those things that I see from people are a little skeevy, a little maniacal, a little, little weird in my book. Maybe it's not, maybe it's just me, you know, but I think eventually people will get sick of all this collabing and all these sell me this, sell me that. And I mean, just be straight up with them, all right? Like, hey guys, use code Sawyer. I'm gonna use this money to pay for some rent and some groceries and further my strength in deadlifting. I, uh, I might sometimes buy a new camera if I use this money that you guys are gonna be giving me using my code. Um, I also might be putting my money into creating a gym in which then I hopefully have it where you guys come and fly out and train with me. Like, we're just like, yo guys, use Code Sawyer. I need help. I just bought this new fancy, this really, really new car, you know? I'm not even shitting on these people, to be honest, right? Because it's like, oh, well, hey, they have money and you don't. I got money, but no, not, like, not like what they got. Not, and I'm saying they as like somebody as specific. I don't have anyone specific, you know? I'm just telling you my thoughts and processes in this life we call the fitness industry where, you know, if you're making money or if I made money, right, I want to be able to spend it in a smart way, you know, similar to like people who make it in the NFL and all this stuff. Some people buy it on expensive jewelry and cars and all this stuff and then all that stuff depreciates. You know, land doesn't depreciate. Usually a house, house won't depreciate if you get a good deal on it. You know, obviously there's some things that could happen, but like for me, right, if I drop my programs, right, because this is all kind of connected back, if like I drop a program, what is that money I'm going to be using it for, right? Obviously, maybe the rent and, you know, the food and all that stuff, that's normal living costs, but also at the same time, I do want to get my shop done that I've been just slowly chipping away, and I say slowly with a capital S, and a capital L, and a capital O, and a W, and whatever the else, right? Because uh, 
I haven't been able to put that much time into it. But now, maybe, you know, drop the program, make some money, use that money to get the shop done. It's 60 by 40, you know, I need to hook up electrical, I need to hook up heating, but the equipment's in there. Uh, there's plumbing, but the plumbing's not hooked up. I gotta get that hooked up. So it sounds like there's a lot of things that need to be done, but uh, the building's there, the concrete's there, you know, I just gotta put in the work. So maybe after my lease is up from uh, Houston, I'll go back and do that. Or maybe after this competition, I'll slowly like talk to a contractor, give them some money, and then just like keep almost like a down payment, but just like the money that I make off the programs, I just slowly put towards the shop, which is, I think would be smart, you know? <laughs> fully last, like just get like it connected, but not like turned on, you know, fully insulate the top, all that stuff. Cause that's, I eventually, that's what I want. But when it comes down to the strength aspects, right? Me being in the most animalistic state, the anabolic state, it's me not leaving the house and me becoming a bear, me walking maybe five or 10 feet and then just training, you know? And then I can get those recovery modalities that Phil Heath was talking, talking to me about, you know? in uh, there and that's going to take me you know whoa eventually to the next level because uh what is this person doing recovery is everything i understand that but uh we'll see i don't know i'm just chatting at this point i gotta i gotta listen to me i'm gonna listen to some music and uh get this food down when I get back so thank you guys for watching I'll see you guys in the next video don't know what it will be but I'm sure it will be another video like this because I enjoy making videos like this so leave a comment use code Sawyer so I can pay some for some things I'll let you know what I buy with my code and uh, yeah links to use code Sawyer in the description always